Okay, everybody, uh, I want to go ahead and probably revisit what we had talked about on Thursday with the law of cosines and working with the ambiguous case, you know, the arrangements that are side side angle. And we talked about this in class, so if you have seen this, uh, you know, because we applied the law of cosines to the first two examples, just close out the video. This is more for the people who missed class. So for those of you who did miss class on Thursday, what we did, and you've probably seen the notes that are posted, on example three, we used the law of cosines to figure out all of what we needed to solve for the two, uh, two triangles when we have the ambiguous case and we have a swinging side that produces two triangles. We did a little exploratory work here. We dropped down uh, an altitude Oh, and by the way, you don't have to take any notes on this um, unless you want to. This is just kind of sit back and absorb it. So back to what I was saying. We went ahead and dropped down an altitude and we, um, whoops, didn't want that. And we compared it to side A, which is your swinging side. And we found that A was greater than your altitude, but less than this side C. That's the recipe for two triangles. Great. So I uh, went ahead and said, we're doing this with law of cosines. This is not gonna be everybody's favorite thing, but um, Friday we learned law of sines and there's a video up there. And if you don't like this, you can certainly try it with law of sines instead. So anyway, um, we have angle A and we have side A. We have um, values for each of those. So that's gonna um, inform us which version of the law of cosines to use. We'll start with the one that has a squared to start it out, okay? So um, we plugged in all the numbers and uh, worked everything over to the right. And now it's set up for your quadratic formula because this uh, the coefficient here is A, so that's one. All of this except for this C right here, this C, is going to produce the B. And then there's your C, and these are the parts that go in your quadratic formula. So here's opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And when you work the problem, we are going to get a discriminant, you know, the b squared minus 4ac, that part, the ink flows a little thin, um, this is going to be a real number that's greater than zero. And when that happens, you get two sides for B. You know, you get the long side and then you get the short side after you swing the swinging side over. And we found all the rest of the triangles. So that's what we did on Thursday. Now what I'm gonna do now is pause this and I wanna show you the front. The front is gonna be just a smidge different. So hold on, we're gonna get this pause and I'll be right back. All right, so that didn't take long, and this is uh, kind of an amended first side of these notes. Um, if you look at your notes, we pretty much uh, solved this first example a number of different ways. We used law of sines. We actually discovered when we did some preliminary work on it, we dropped the altitude down and did you know how many triangles, and we got one right triangle. So we did law of sines. We did special right triangles. We did um, Pythagorean theorem, we did right triangle trig. I mean, there's all kinds of options for this. But what we didn't talk about is what would happen if you used the law of cosines, all right? So we, um, this, this set of notes is going to feature law of cosines. Again, you have got a value for angle C, that's 30 degrees. You have a length for side C, that's six. So that lends itself to that particular version of your law of cosines. Put the numbers in, work everything over to the right, so you have zero equals, and then we can pick out A, which is one, B, which is all of this, except for this letter B, or letter A, rather, representing side A, and then this is C. So we're actually gonna solve for side A. And so here's your quadratic formula with your discriminant right here, and amazingly enough, look at what that discriminant became. All right, if the discriminant is um, you know, a real number greater than zero, you get two values for that one side you're solving for. But if it's zero, 
you only have one value. And you know, since cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, you can easily figure out what side A equals, which will be 6 radical 3. And that's perfect because you know, we have one right triangle, so that's 90 degrees, this is 30, this is 60. So we are definitely looking at a special right triangle of 30, 60, 90. And so that would mean that, um, get this down here, this is your x side, this is your 2x side, right? Double 6 to 12, and this is your x square root of 3 side. So that's what happens and that's what I wanted you to see. The discriminant is actually going to inform you how many triangles you have and you don't need to do all of the preliminary work. So that brings us to this last one that's example two. And I set it up, you know, put the angle in the lower left and the side opposite that's given. And then this side here that sort of connects the angle in this side, uh, I left with, I put in the, the remaining length. So that gave us all the other labels. And since again, I know A and A, I just went ahead with this version of your law of cosines, plug the numbers in, got it down to here where I can start using the quadratic formula. All right, and I did. So again, the discriminant should give us some information and look at what it gave us, All right? It gave us something that was non-real. Well, if that happens, we are not gonna have a triangle. And you would have seen that if you had just dropped your altitude down, you know, and compared that to your A and all of that, figured out what H was. Um, you don't even have to do that. If your discriminant comes out non-real, you won't get a triangle. You may recall when we did this in class, we had something like sine inverse of 1.154 or something close to that. Well, that didn't, that was not possible because you can't use a ratio greater than one. So if you don't have a triangle, it's going to reveal itself. You just have to go looking and one of the ways that you pick will, will show you that you only, that you don't have any triangle. So you didn't need to write any of that down. That's it. Um, if you missed Friday, you can move on to that.